In today's Neville Goddard conversation, I'd like to revisit thinking fourth dimensionally, which is thinking from the end, inner conversations from your vision, inner speech, as though you are already the person you desire to be, as the very imaginal act of carrying on an inner conversation from the premise of your vision is to imply and thus operate from that premise, which is to indicate that you already are that person now, as reality is now outpicturing what you are conscious of being inside. And so thus now, and always now, you already are the ideal you desire to be. As I always say, reality is inside, and the outpicturing is a series of nows to realizing it. One moment now, another now, another now, stitched together as bridge of incidents, which includes other fulfilled desires woven together by your subconscious mind. And so I encourage you to fulfill your desires, that which you love, inside, by your inner speech, whenever desire shows up, from the premise of them already accepted, wherever you go, as they play out woven together in life. And since the subconscious gives birth to reality, this makes sense from a physical perspective. Otherwise, reality would seem like there was no rhythm and flow when it is a musical symphony of fulfilled desires woven together as the journey continues, all orchestrated by your inner speech. So you literally, inwardly speak things into existence. For if one could not, they would perhaps allow programming from their past or interpretations of the world of Caesar to dictate their life or a combination when it's really up to them. You have all the power. And so I encourage you to carry on the conversation from the premise of your ideal and all related. Whatever is true, lovely, and pure, and all those things we are told shall be added unto us. And so to apply the power, we are given the two gifts of speech and mind. To choose the life that you want. Mind is a blank canvas and you paint on it with your inner speech, not to literally create, as nothing is to be created. Everything has been created for you. You choose how it appears down to the last vivid detail by your inner speech. It's all done for you by the invisible hand, as the human hand yields completely to those assumptions. By the way, I was asked the other day, on my personal opinion as to why in the Hermetica it was stated that two gifts were bestowed upon humanity. And I believe it was to learn how to consciously use the power to create worlds, or we could say reveal worlds, for creation is complete, while also knowing the infinite experientially. For everything you learn in this life can never be taken away from you. Actually, I would say nothing was ever taken away from us. And so now, in relation to our discussion, whatever you experience in your outer world is subject to your inner speech in relation to it, as it is heard inside. And thus, outer suggestions have no power unless you accept them. They mean nothing unless you self-suggest the meaning. And so you can suggest what it means in loving relation to your vision. And by doing this, you give instructions to initiate change inside which reflects outside. This is how it has always been, even with the book that started this journey for me back in 2004, which was titled Think and Grow Rich. As he said, the secret was buried within the book. Actually, right on the cover, Think and Grow Rich. It was primarily the auto-suggestion and subconscious mind chapters, which we see inner conversations in Neville's work that facilitated the change all throughout the years and still does till this day. A notable mention goes to the Sixth Sense chapter, which in relation to, let's reflect upon this quote from Neville. He states, Many persons, including myself, have observed events before they occurred, that is, before they occurred in this world of three dimensions. If the occurring events were not in this world when they were observed, then to be perfectly logical, they must have been out of this world. And then he goes on to speak about how we already know what we want as the spiritual self speaks to the physical self through the language of desire. And then he says here, the key to progress in life and to the fulfillment of dreams lies in ready obedience to its voice. 
unhesitating obedience to its voice is an immediate assumption of the wish fulfilled. To desire a state is to have it. So I really like this part here where he says, to desire a state is to have it, as to say, accept it and go on with your life because each conscious imaginal act is a fulfilled desire. I'd say this is true, as since I've been applying Neville's information, I'm more aware. Also noticing myself desiring many times, I accept it right away, always as fulfilled, and then a lot of times forget about it. At first this felt different because I was not used to applying the law this way, and then it became natural. They then seem to show up woven into my bridge of incidents on the way to realizing my definite chief aims, proving again that life can be consciously constructed as a wonderful musical symphony of fulfilled desires. This includes people that I wanted to meet, experiences I wanted to have, etc. So I set a definite chief aim, usually at the start of the year, as discussed in that video that I released at the start of the year. If you haven't seen it, I'll link in the description to it. And I commit to them by writing them on a card as I've done for many years. And they all came true. After they come true, I start another card and away I go to see them into existence. Now with Neville's information during the course, I realize I may have many desires in which I accept as done as he says. Unhesitating obedience to its voice is an immediate assumption of the wish fulfilled. To desire a state is to have it. So it's really like that. We accept them as fulfilled and move on, like you would drink a glass of water to satisfy the thirst and go on with your day. And so if one has challenges, accepting their own suggestions and quenching their desires, that's totally fine. To go beyond any mental chatter or emotional turmoil as those arise from a mental state, apply what he articulates here to silence the mind and accept the suggestion. Number one, he says, the first step in changing the future is desire. That is, define your objective. Know definitely what you want. So I found this could be general or specific. It's really up to you. Sometimes I apply self-suggestion in very specific ways. For example, how certain people relate with me in certain ways. And it works to that degree of granularity. For example, I have a friend who I found very irritating that every time they would show up they would talk about certain subjects. So I imagined a mutually harmonious relationship with them to hang out and talk about subjects outside of those ones, and it happened. General is really what you determine general to be. It can be a certain amount of clients for your business, certain revenues, an ideal relationship, etc., whatever you desire. Release identification to the world of Caesar's suggestions and commune with yourself lovingly with your own heart. Now, while a picture is worth a thousand words, one word is also worth a thousand pictures, for example, in number two. He says, construct an event in which you believe you would encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. An event which implies fulfillment of your desire. So here I apply auto-suggestion, something like, people congratulate me wherever I go, or many share with me how much my videos have been helpful to them, or the Dr. Milliken one Neville shared, I have a lavish, steady, dependable income consistent with integrity and mutual benefit, as these would imply that the desire has been fulfilled. Or someone congratulating you on your wedding or a friend saying how you and your loved one look so happy together, etc. You can speak it in your mind or imagine it, as he mentioned that speech is the image of mind. Also, if you'd like seeing, tasting, touching, smelling, hearing, one or a few or in combination, it's really up to you. Whatever feels natural for you. One way is not better than the other. Listen to yourself and trust yourself. You know the way. Number three, immobilize the physical body and induce a condition akin to sleep. Lie on a bed or relax in a chair and imagine that you are sleepy. Then, with eyelids closed and your attention focused on the action you intend to experience in imagination, Mentally feel yourself right into the proposed action, imagining all the while that you are actually performing the action here and now. So if I apply state akin to sleep, I play my auto suggestions recorded in audio with some light music in the background on loop and then I fall asleep. I usually end up waking up in an hour or so and turning them off. Then when I wake up the next day, it feels like something has changed. And then the auto suggestions play out as experiences.
I've also done imaginal scenes and that works perfectly. So again, it's really up to you, whatever feels natural for you. So state akin to sleep, otherwise known as hypnagogic state or theta brainwave frequency is where we're open to suggestion without unnecessary conflict in mind from past limiting beliefs. So again, imagine lovingly because what you're doing here is sending instructions to the subconscious and it will bring forth. So you can keep it simple or make it theatrical and elaborate, whatever you'd like. They all work for me, so it's really your choice. As long as you're aware prior of what you are suggesting to yourself, because the rational part of your mind which guards the gate to the subconscious is not as involved. It's there just enough to stimulate the imaginal act and thus in this childlike state, you are extremely suggestible. This is a sacred doorway into the subconscious, so I suggest treating it as such. So again, this is about self-suggestion. You have a formless self, I, your awareness of being, awareness, aliveness. And here you're releasing all unnecessary identification and reforming yourself in imagination to which it expresses outwardly naturally and automatically as worldly changes, as all changes play out automatically by what we have accepted as true, as all is an expression of your subconscious mind. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You can say, via my inner speech, I mold my world. I'm now aware from a heightened awareness of my inner speech and inwardly speak my world into existence from the premise of my fulfilled desire beyond outer appearances as speech being the image of mine is the molder of my reality. For I know that every place that the sole of my foot shall tread that has been done for me to reflect my consciously chosen ideal inner speech representing my ideal which I am conscious of being now. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.